on kind of two concepts today. We're going to be talking about creating a levitation sort of a photograph, and we're also going to be really focusing in on, on layer masks. I know we've spent a, a lot of time in the class using layer masks, but I feel like it's something that still is a little bit confusing to a, a lot of you, and so um, we're going to focus on the the basics of the levitation utilizing a, a layer mask. And so yesterday afternoon, um, I had my son London go outside really quick, and um, we went ahead and created this um, little Harry Potter kind of illustration of him practicing Quidditch in the backyard. So really quickly, if you want to kind of see how the layers are set up, and then we'll kind of go through a quick use of some of the tutorials uh, or some of the different parts of the um, of the layer masks. So I'm just going to turn these off really quick just by clicking and dragging over all of the eyeballs so we can kind of get a sense of what the original picture started off with. And so we've kind of got the background picture and then we've got the picture of London. Now he's not cut out um, in the same way that you might think like he wasn't shot separately and then put into this environment which is what helps the levitations really work well. Um, it's just simply that there is a, a layer mask here. Uh, and then with the layer mask being, um, when it's showing it as white, this is what the original picture kind of looked like. Um, and then we've just masked away the area of, of me and the stool so that we can then see uh, just London in, in place and it really helps the lighting kind of stay natural and um, consistent because they're actually in that environment um, and then we're just removing whatever it is that's kind of holding them in place. So um, the way that we're going to kind of get this picture set up um, is you're going to start off in Lightroom and so here's all the different pictures that were kind of imported and I think uh, this is the one that I chose because it looked like his hand was kind of reaching out um, and then here is our background picture, right? So I'm just going to select those two photographs um, using the command key so that they're both highlighted. And then I'm going to hold down the control key and click uh, or however, whatever method of right clicking you want to do. And then I'm going to say edit in and then not just inside of Photoshop, but open as layers in Photoshop. And that will then open up those two files with them already being inside of one document and you know, just saving me a little bit of time of having to open them separately, copy and paste, uh, so that they're into a single file. So there's those. So you can see now, here we've got our two pictures, and, you know, there's the background, and then there is the, the picture where, uh, and I'm standing in the back trying to lift up the, the cape so it has a sense so it feels like it's flying, as opposed to if it's just dangling down, it's not going to look like he's moving, right? So... The, the, the process of it's going to be really pretty straightforward. So to start off with, we've got our top layer uh, highlighted, which is this is the layer with London and I on it. And so all we need to do is simply make a layer mask. So down here again, if you don't remember, layer mask is this icon here. It looks like a little um, rectangle with a black circle on it. And so by clicking at it, it then adds this separate white layer next to the picture, right? And because it's white, white reveals, black conceals. So if white is revealing, it shows everything that's on this layer. So we see everything as if nothing has changed. If we were to invert that just by hitting Command I and it turned to a black, then everything is now hidden and all we see is the background layer, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and invert that as well. So all we need to do is simply remove the areas of the image that we don't want and it will then reveal a the image below it right so um, I've got the brush tool selected um, I've got kind of a soft brush um, and I'm gonna be painting with black on the keyboard if I just hit X notice down here these are just gonna switch back and forth so as we're working with layer masks it's a lot of um, if I make a mistake I need to bring it back and reveal it if I need to conceal any part of this then I need to be painting with black and so I'll make my brush just a little bit bigger. And I usually just use the bracket key on the keyboard to make the brush bigger and smaller. There's ways of holding down the um, 
control key or the, sorry the option key and dragging on the pen since we're using a, the tablets but I like to keep one hand on the pen and one hand on the keyboard for keyboard shortcuts and things like that so I'm just gonna start painting and anywhere where I paint then just the tree in the background behind me is going to start appearing right so I can just and I'm gonna do a, a relatively quick job here just to kind of get it kind of roughed in and then the other area is going to be underneath his his feet right so we need to take that out and start to remove those areas okay and so already you can see it's it's already starting to come together right and it's just painting away those two little areas to create the levitation but once we start getting into the smaller details I think it's easier to start to work with um, making selections right so in photo one we learned how to make lots of different types of selections in something like this we're going to be making pretty small little areas that we actually need to define. We're not cutting out the whole picture, right? So we don't have to re, you know, make a great selection all the way around him. There's just a couple very small areas, really just the area here around his feet and then this area where the hand is holding up the cape. So very small areas where we actually need to make a, a good selection. So I'm going to choose the polygonal lasso tool. Uh, I think that the edge that it creates is a little bit better and uh, a little easier to control than say like the magnetic or the freehand. And then to zoom in, I'm just gonna do Command Plus on the keyboard really quick, just to go ahead and get in there a little bit uh, closer. So uh, holding down the space bar, I'm just gonna move this over just a little bit so we can see where this hand is. So all I really need to do is define where the edge of this cape is going to go. And so I'm just gonna make a selection kind of right along here and kind of around so that that's the active area. Uh, I'm also setting my pixel, my feather uh, on the lasso tool to one pixel because you notice here there's a little bit of a softness to the edge of this um, so I don't want a really crisp line right there right up against there where it's going to look a little bit uh, fake so having a little bit of a transition is going to be helpful. So I'm just going to go ahead and click down and start my selection and so I'm just going to try to follow along kind of where that edge of that cape is and then through here I'm gonna you know imagine where I think that the cape should go to you know create a continuous line through here okay and then I just need to come around the area that I want to work on and again this is a really small area that really needs to be um, be done and up here uh, looks like maybe there's a little bit of the hand up here so I may want to also come along um, let's say the edge up here as well and kind of define a little bit more clearly where I want that edge of the cape to kind of be. So here we go. Just a couple more little spots. And then we'll close it. Okay, so now that I've got that area defined, I'm still on my layer mask over here. I'm going to switch back to my brush just by hitting B on the keyboard and uh, I can make my brush a little bit smaller now. And so I want to just kind of clean up this edge here. So this is the active area so I can just paint and I can now paint right up against the edge of that and not worry that it's going to go over to the inside of the cape. So I can just kind of clean that part up nice. Um, and notice this part here is a little bit transparent so I can just simply without having to do anything else just go select, inverse, and then I can switch my colors, so I can switch to white, and I can bring back a solid area uh, along here so that I don't have any kind of ghosting um, kind of going through that part of the cape. Okay. Now, this part looks pretty good. There's still the fingers that are in here. So um, in that case, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it directly on the actual picture itself and uh, go ahead and remove it. So I'm just gonna click right on the layer, and we've already, selected the inverse so this is the active area this is the not active area so any work that I do here it's going to go right up against the edge of this so I'm just going to grab the stamp tool or I could hit S on the keyboard and I'm going to tell it where I want to take it from by holding the option key and then I'm going to go ahead and and start to you know paint away little parts uh, of those fingers and then we'll take a little bit from over here And again, it doesn't matter if I go over here, it's not going to ever cover that part up. So we'll just clean those up. 
Again, let me see the glass a little bit from over here. Okay. So now we've gotten rid of the fingers there. And if we zoom out, Command Zero, uh, we can see you know that part has been cleaned up. Okay. So I'm pretty much done with the cake, right? So now that little area has been removed. So now all that's left is just the you know the last little bit of, of the stool here. So to switch back to the lasso tool, I can just hit L on the keyboard, and then I can start a new selection down here. And again, I'll zoom back in a little bit so we can see the line of that um, shoe just a little bit better. So again, spacebar gives me the hand. I can then drag around. So um, I'm just going to create a new selection over here. As soon as I click, it's going to go ahead and get rid of the old selection. So I'm just going to go ahead and click. Oops, let's see here. Oh, we'll just do Command D and get rid of the selection. Okay, so we'll just click here, and then we're just going to follow right along the edge of where we want his shoes to go. If it puts down a marker where you don't want it, you can always hit Delete on the keyboard, and that'll remove that. I think it'll be best to stay a little bit away from the, the light part of that wood. So even if I'm cutting into the shoe just a little bit and redefining where that is, uh, I think that's better than to take a little bit of that yellowy color of the oops, uh, a little yellow of that bottom part of the, of the stool. So we'll just click here. Sorry, I double clicked accidentally. So it went away. It's coming along. And again, I'm not really going to do any work out here. So I'm just going to come around the area to define, you know, to give me some space to work inside of and then click one more time there. So now I've got this active area, it's right along the edge of the bottom, and then to switch back to the brush, just be on the keyboard. Um, my, and because I'm not over here, so if you notice here, the picture is active, and notice it's giving me a red color as my foreground color, so I need to switch back to the layer mask, and as soon as I'm back on the layer mask, then I've got white and black. Again, white's going to reveal, so if I paint here, it's gonna bring that back, so I need to hit X on the keyboard, it gives me black as my foreground color, and then now I can paint right up against the edge of there and paint away any of that. And then just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and inverse the selection. So again, select inverse. And the keyboard shortcut, it always will show you right here. So the up arrow is shift and then command and then I. So I could do command, shift command I. And then just to make sure, oops, um, just to make sure that that's going to stay solid, I'll hit X, switch to white and just make sure that I didn't somehow ghost away. I tried to stay a little ways away from that so that I wouldn't accidentally remove part of it. So we're nice and solid there. To get rid of the selection, Command and D. So if we zoom out, Command Zero, um, we can now see we've got our basic structure of the, um, of our, uh, of our, you know, of our levitation, right? He now appears to be, you know, floating in midair, right? And again, we only had to make two small selections, one right along this edge, one right along that edge, and then now he, you know, we've got great edges all the way around. If you zoom in, it's not, you're never going to be able to tell that that's been cut out. Whereas if I tried, you know, taking him from a different background and tried to put him into this background, there's always going to be some amount of picking up some of the background or some wonky edge on his arm or, you know, something. So it's going to be nice and clean. So that's our basic idea of how to do the levitation.